Hello everybody, welcome back to the Hearthstone Singapore Major. My name's TJ, I'm joined by Lothar. And the Morlock. And his, ti legs. and his tiny little friend <laughs> between his legs. <laughs> what a yoke. Yeah, <laughs> we're about to jump into the uh, winner's finals here um, between uh, Waning Moon and uh, Shiny Pants. Shiny yes. Pants has been featured on the stream so much over the, pa over the past couple days. Like three times already, right? Yeah. yeah. That's quite a lot. Yeah. One in Waning Moon was uh, actually on stream once, and that was a huge mistake with the sequencing and then the roping out. Yeah. Out of the uh, the turn out, which was a actually a huge thing to to, to be held because that uh, that was the reason why he lost that match. Mm -hmm. So it was quite interesting. Hopefully he learned from his mistake, and uh, we'll see him play slightly faster now. Yeah. We shall see, but uh, like I said, this is the winner bracket final, so the winner goes directly to the grand finals. Huge deal. Huge deal. Uh, both players that are in this matchup are guaranteed top four, so they've already guaranteed themselves some prize money. And of course, those Hearthstone Championship Tour points. But they are not in this to take second place. They're not in this to take third place. They're in this thing to win it all, and... What better to do it with than a secret paladin mirror? Yeah, it's actually not th that kind of mirror because uh, Waning Moon is playing Arden Squires mm -hmm. and a Divine Favor. I was quite surprised because the first, like when the first Waning Moon was uh, featured on stream, I was almost sure that he's just playing an aggro paladin. Yeah. Because you know? there was like two core hammers, Blessing of Kings, yeah. and the Arden Squires. Mm -hmm. And I saw Divine Favor and I'm like, okay, he's going like all aggressive. And yeah. then turn six, boom, top deck, Mysterious Challenge. And I'm like, okay. What a good deck. Yeah. <laughs> Great deck. Yeah. Uh, Waning Moon is a player that uh, plays a lot on the North American ladder, and uh, he's actually finished top 100 quite a few times. I think even just last season he was like top 40 or something like that. So Waning Moon, definitely a strong player uh, from the Philippines. We'll see how it goes against Shiny Pants. Shiny Pants. Every time I say Shiny Pants, I just, I, I, I just think about Bob the Square Pants. SpongeBob Square Pants? Yeah. SpongeBob shiny pants. Kind of. Turn cool. 1, Divine Shield, Minibot. Will it start? Then turn 2, Knife Juggler, and turn 3, Kong Hammer. What is better? Against another Paladin. You don't want to play Knife Juggler into a Minibot. Right? No, no, not at all. So. But you also have Mysterious Challenger. So maybe there's some merit in saving the coin. Can you give up some of the potential early game power to make sure that you play Mysterious Challenger first? What is your play if you play Minibot on t and he plays a Minibot on 10 2? Then you want to Hero Power instead, right? Yeah, because you don't want to give away the free trade. So he forgoes playing the Mysterious, or forgoes uh, holding onto the coin for the Mysterious Challenger. But a strong play nonetheless. Two Minibots for Waning Moon. It's quite unfortunate because he has like four two drops. And he has a four drop, so he yeah. can't use them to curve out. Hmm. I think actually Hunted Creeper might be better here unless... No, your opponent can't coin out a massive battle anymore, so... Yeah, you should be fine. There's no way that he could... the Charney Pants could break this Divine Shield. Uh, at least in, in as far as my memory serves. So... And also, if your opponent coins out a 2-drop... Whoa! Okay, I'm blown. Away. By this move, why would you play knife juggle into certain death? Isn't just hero powering better? I mean, you just use it to pop divine shield, and the only reason I can see why would that happen is just that you want to the the divine shield on minibot again. I don't know. I'm <sighs> quite quite surprised. Yeah. Because your opponent wouldn't trade with it anyway, so you, uh, like if you would hero power, your opponent would just go face for another yeah. two damage, so he doesn't lose the divine shield, so it doesn't yeah. give you divine shield from Coghammer, and then you just use the one one to pop the divine shield, and you play your own Coghammer after you attack with your your own mini bot, and you have the same outcome, but you have one more card in hand, and it's still a really important knife juggler. Yeah, it seems a little bit questionable. Um, but this is the play they decided to go with. I guess doesn't really care too much about the knife juggler. Now let's see. Waning Moon has to play Palter Shutter, I guess, unless he really wants to play 
double hunted creepers. I'm not sure if flying shiny pants plays any consecrations. Yeah. If he doesn't play any consecrations, double hunted creeper might be actually okay. Uh, the thing with Double Haunted Creeper is next turn he doesn't really have a good play. He floats mana. So if he plays Power to Shadow this turn, next turn he can Haunted Creeper Divine Favor. He, Divine Favor wouldn't get much value, but it opens up more opportunities. But yeah, Haunted Creeper definitely is the harder board to remove. Well, let's see. Double Haunted Creepers. By the way, if you combine two, two hands from both players, you have a 6, 7, and an 8. Yeah. <laughs> The ultimate nightmare scenario for all players. Uh, Master for Battle picked up. Not really too useful this turn. Since he already has a weapon equipped. He can keep her of Oldemon and just start... Mm. And yeah, that's a good option. Just push. Even though you're only getting 1-1 one, one worth of stats, it's basically 4 mana for a 4-5. It's not four only five worth the of stats. fact that you put on, um, the one more stats on the HP. It's about yeah. the fact that the Hunted Creepers can't push through the minibot anyway. Yeah. Uh, like, at all, right now. Sure. So basically stop your opponent's, you, you, you cancel your opponent's turn, which is nice. Yeah. You can also attack into Hunted Creeper first, and then use the Keeper of Wilderman to heal it back mm -hmm. to free HP. Yeah. But I would probably favor just the Keeper and attack face for free damage, attack with the Cog Hammer. I like that, yeah. He's running out of time though, gotta make a decision. Just don't keep her Voodoo Man in your opponent's minion. Here we go. Alright, well you can see the, the mouse a little shaky there. We're up yeah. to the, the winner's final, so uh, the player's playing a little bit a little bit nervously. I know Winning Moon, I saw him right before he went into his match, and he was super nervous. Maybe he didn't, didn't adjust the sensitivity of the mouse. <laughs> yeah. And he's just not used to it. I mean, yeah. it's a huge factor. It's if your playstyle is actually, you know, like roping and then making yeah. the, the last decisions during the rope. Yeah. So when you're not used to your sensitivity because you're playing on a different mouse <laughs> or whatever. What is going on? There's a leg. There. There's a kappa as well. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Two hunted creepers, and basically that's it. Yeah. Wendy Moon can use the cog hammer here to push through. And then push Shiny Pants into destroying one of the Hunted Creepers, which will put more power on board. Yeah. Which is not bad. I think, I think you actually kill your own Hunted Creeper here. To bring more power? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Also forces an attack. So next turn, uh, Wendy Moon should have quite a bit of stuff on the board. And he'll be able to supplement that with a pile of shredder, or perhaps a mysterious challenger ripped off the top. That would just be disgusting. Yeah. With so such a huge board. Justice. Yeah. Uh, imagine if Shiny Pants still had that knife juggler. Yep. This would be the perfect scenario. Imagine how this game would have been. He would have been. Yeah. That would have. Oh. I can just see it now, Lothar. <laughs> pew, 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 I can pew, just see pew. those juggles. He would just pew pew his face. Yeah, he would pew pew his face. Uh, in revenge for Waning Moon defeating pew pew your face earlier in the tournament. Exactly. Two pilot first. Well, Waning Moon just draws doubles of everything. Yeah. This game. Apart from Tyrion, because he's only one mm -hmm. in the deck. Would you play two Tyrions if you can, if you could? <laughs> yes, I would. Oh. I'd play two Tyrions. If I could play four Tyrions, I'd probably play four. Would you? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Just having your Ashbringer override it over and over again. That's the tipping point, I think. Like, two is the maximum. Yeah. But as soon as you start playing more than one Tyrion, everybody else would just start playing more than one Black Knight. <laughs> <laughs> and more than one Harrison Jones. And more than one Harrison Jones. More than one Owl. More than one Keeper. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Keeper would probably be a four of. If you could have four. For any card. Let's just switch hearts into 60 cards per deck. Yeah. Good idea. And add lands. <laughs> 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 That's a great mechanic, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of easy. Slam the six. You have two minions on board, so the perfect scenario because you play around Big Game Hunter, most likely. Yep. And even if he does Big Game Hunter, even if he has Big Game Hunter in his deck, you're happy because then you just play Dr. Boom. Yep. On an empty board. 
So this is not looking good for Waning Moon. He's at 17. There's a huge 6-6 six, six minion. And with a single attack from your side, not only you get damage to the face with the Noble Sacrifice, you also add the damage from the Avenge and the Competitive Spirit with Redemption. Yeah. So it's not looking good. I don't know if you even want to attack. Just Competitive Spirit, Hero Power and pass the turn? Yeah. Hopefully Horrible. you can get some Divine Favor value next turn, but you're probably not going to even be able to because you have to play Tyrion on turn 8. So Waning Moon does decide to attack. That's an additional 2 damage to his face. Now the Redemption will get frogged on the 2-1, which can, can uh, most likely will get killed by the Palty Shutter. The Avenge lands on the 6-6, making it at 9-8. And the Hunter Creeper is just, you know, a minor, a minor obstacle. And uh, is that competitive spirit? No, is it? Yeah, it has. It to be. is. Yeah, it could have been. No, it couldn't have been repentance because he played the power to treasure into it. So that's 13 damage being represented on board. 14 damage being represented on board. And the noble sacrifice. Where is the knife juggler when you need it? Yeah. So probably just trade into this one one and then just play the doctor boom. Seems reasonable to me. Start smacking the face with that 10 damage. Well, you definitely don't want to kill the Panther Shredders because of the, you know, Doomsayer. Yeah. Or even just, like, a Noiltron. <laughs> <laughs> Competitive Spirit buffs the Panther Shredders to 10 damage, but it's still 13 off. It's not Druid. You can't really combo off. Yeah. And Tyrion just won't block enough damage, it feels like. Even if you kill off the Mysterious Challenger here and play Tyrion... Well, you need to pop two push through. Uh, Taunters from the Panther Shredders. That's possible. Even just one taunter might do it with a Tyrion. But then what do you do? The Tyrion doesn't have that much value against Boom bots and a Dr. Boom. Because it leaves the Dr. Boom on 1 HP and you're kind of sad when that, when that happens. And then how do you even win from there? I don't think you can. Oh, that's also good. <laughs> <laughs> oh... <laughs> Well, that's a good Tyrion. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good Tyrion. <laughs> <laughs> the old pop the pile of the treaders into Manor Wraith into concede play. Yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, he, he, he was dead anyway, but those are just one of those plays uh, where you're punished. Uh, yeah. The, the world is punishing you. I mean, it's better that it happened this turn in this game yeah. than when it another one when it actually like really mattered that yeah. you couldn't play a minion because you didn't play around ma mana wrath. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, well, Shiny Pants is continuing his domination streak right now. 3-0'd his last matchup. Uh, starts this matchup 1-0. to zero. Did has he start with Paladin as well? In the last one? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think he started with... Oh, maybe he did. Yeah, I think he did. So now Druid time, right? Yeah. Actually, I think he saved his oh, druid for last. Yeah, he saved yeah. His, he's been saving his druid for last. He's very. It seems like he's very predictable with his deck choices. Not that it matters too much with conquest, since you have to win with all your decks anyway. Yep. But your opponents can get sort of a, a head start on you if they know you're going to open with paladin. They'll just open with the deck that they think that beats paladin the best. And uh, if sometimes having a lead in a series is useful more than in in just uh, the way of the score, but psychologically. Yep, I agree. Shiny Pants has a really good opener. Flame Imp, Flame Imp into Void Walker, into Dark Peddler. G if you use the coin, of course, on mm -hmm. turn one. I'm not sure if that's so important against Paladins. It depends how many cards will Vining Moon keep. But I will probably keep the Flame Imp, Void Walker, and Dark Peddler. Yeah. He kept all four. So all four. Bran, Bran as well. Bran guarantees that he has something to play on turn three. And that's nice, and because yeah. then every single top deck that has a battle cry is actually like, well, that's a good card now. Yeah. Like abuse of surgeon, plus four damage, sure, why yeah. not? Right. Dark Paddler, draw two one mana cards, why not? Yeah. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give me the one drops. And ooh. Um Definitely play Void Walker now turn one with the flame because you can play into noble sacrifice by yeah. that. By doing that. Do you play both Void Walkers? Or do you play a Flame Imp and a Void Walker? I Why think would you play both both Void Walkers? Because they trade better into Haunted Creepers? 
But why would you not play the most aggressive? Yeah, that's true. One drop, right? Yeah. If you know, if you're playing into the noble sacrifice, you know that your minion will still sustain the attack next turn. Yeah. Because there's no way Paladin will deal one damage on turn two, mm -hmm. unless he's using the the lands, which no one uses. So I think that's an easy choice. Yeah. But it might be a case for the next turn, and you're right here. Yeah. Haunted Creeper. So, so most now. likely going to test for Noble Sacrifice yep, here. definitely. It's not Noble Sacrifice, it's a green light for the Red Goblin, I would say. I mean, it, he looks like a Goblin, right? Without the ears? I mean, without the horns? Okay, never mind. I think <laughs> he looks like an Imp. <laughs> okay, uh, let's stay with that. <laughs> I think Imps are basically Goblins. Ooh, Coghammer is... That's not bad. Yeah. It forces the attack from the. Uh, it'll force the attack from the flame imp into the haunted creeper, and allows you to just kill off immediately one of these void walkers this turn. So you can start fighting back on the board. And keeper of ultimate is actually a really good follow up with the haunted creepers because you're most likely going to have a spectral spider laying around <laughs> at some point. <laughs> so you can you can yeah. buff that up to a, a three three. Defender of August. Well, this is a certainly a good four drop for next turn. You know what I think? You just drop drop the burned bronze beard and you're not attacking. You can you can maybe attack into the divine shield to play around like blessing of king. But then Kokhammer kills the void walker, and your opponent can buff his own minion to. Oh, okay, that does make a difference. If he has keeper of Ultiman, you're screwed anyway. Yeah. So, hmm. Not sure about this. Probably it's better to pop the divine shield because you have implosion on turn four. Yeah. And you might start with it. Okay. Okay, he didn't attack. I don't think it matters too much. So now, which minion will be played? Keeper of Ulduban for the plus two plus two and break the Divine Shield and then have a clean trade? I think that's the best one. Yeah. And now all of a sudden the tables have sort of turned. Shiny Pants does have a brand bronze beard, but uh, just a... Uh, he could double one drop from the Dark Peddler yeah, or bring it up to a four six. Well, what about Argus. implosion and just ignore the effect yeah. from the bronze bronze beard? If yeah. it hits for three or four, I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. But then the avenge lands, and you're like, uh oh. Yeah, maybe. Ooh, that's a tough choice. You kind of want to get value out of the dark peddler, or the brand bronze beard, while you can. But it all depends on the quality of the one drops that you pick up. If you don't pick up one drops that you know help you fight back on the board, then it pretty much is. Pointless. Implosion would be better. So but he's gonna go for it. You can't really get soul fire, because the soul fire, like you have first of all to play the soul fire on the hunter creeper. You could take it. Injured Caldier and the flame and corruption. What about corruption? Actually, corruption is great. You take corruption, you kill the um, the hunter creeper. Oh wait, then we need to fast soul fire. Ooh, that's nasty. Why this? Okay, I'm kind of surprised. Hmm. Oh, is it better? Actually, it's better because y the the spiders are being spawned at the start of your opponent's turn, so it's okay. Yeah, he won't be able to attack with them immediately. So the secret is being popped. There are no more secrets for a waning wound on the board, but the board is clear. And that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Pulcher, Arge Argent Squire, and two one ones. Another Doom God. <laughs> well, there has to be implosion this turn. And free. Ooh. But that's a good one. Yeah. Not only does that fight for the board really well against one ones, but it also heals you back up, so. And it will be affected most likely by the competitive spirit. Yeah. So you will have two, um, like, soul drains, I would say. Yeah, it's true. Each turn. You definitely want to play the competitive spirit. Infinite amount of heals. Nearly infinite. Yeah, that competitive spirit. You almost sounded <laughs> like the uh, Emperor from Star Wars. Infinite power. <laughs> 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 That's exactly what I was going for. Lothar, competitive spirit is never going to get better. 
<laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> but well, why would you favor a 1-1 instead of a competitive spirit to get a 2-4 Succubus and a 5-4 Pile the Shredder? Yeah. The 1-1s are like, you know, not that impressive. Yeah. But the 2-4 Succubus is just so good. He's playing the value game. Wow. Wow. I'm impressed. Oh, wow. That's a terrible hand. What are you saying? Doomguard is bad? Uh, well, the hand right now, ignore the cards on the sides of the Doomguard. The <laughs> hand is basically just a Doomguard. He, he could tap, but if Shiny Pants taps and doesn't pick up something worth playing, then he can't even play the Doomguard, so sort of has to go for this. Let's go. Five damage to the face. <laughs> well, actually... Going for the Doom Doomsayer is actually better, I think. Yeah, you're sort of in a desperate situation. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to win? I don't see any kind of options. And uh, if we think back to last turn, he discarded the second Doom Guard with the Soulfire. Yep. So and now he has also only one PO left. Yeah. So his burst potential is... Minus uh, two. Yeah, virtually non-existent. Uh, so Waning Moon is just going to damage this just to get this 1-1 off the board. So that way he can muster for battle. Make sure he gets as much value as possible. He can hero power and competitive spirit. Look at that. The competitive spirit is actually better now. Look, it got better. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> damage to the phase, one heal, which is nice. Yeah, this is just... I don't see a way Shiny Pants comes back into this one unless he snuck a Hellfire into his deck. Or a Haunted Creeper. And there it is! Whoa! <laughs> Haunted Creeper is the exact card that he needed! And a second PO. Well, that's 9 damage. He can go face for 9! Wow! And then he's out of damage. And out of minions. Yeah. Well, that's it. Shiny Pants... Falls short against the Secret Paladin. Yeah. Competitive Spirit adds 7 power to the board. Yeah, so that's just lethal without even the weapon. Well played, my friend. Well played. Alright, well, Wayne Moon ties it up. Here in the winner's bracket finals. Taking a win with Secret Paladin against the Zoo Warlock. It was looking a little bit shaky at first, but he managed to pull it together. Congrats. <laughs> and Everyone find the victory. Yeah. Okay, so two paladins are sealed. Yeah. Correct? Correct. So we have um, Druid left for... Um, they have the same decks. They both have Druid Warlock remaining. Druid Warlock, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, now we'll have to see which classes will be picked by each of those players. So I would say that Shiny Pants will probably stick to the Warlock, because that's what he seems to be doing all yeah. the time. And Waning Moon, because of that, probably will play his own Warlock. Yeah. Because you don't want to risk uh, getting the bad matchup first. Because then you have to, at some point, win a matchup that's going to be sort of unfavorable. Or 50-50. Or uh, so, I'd imagine, yeah. I especially since, yeah, it, it makes sense based off, their, based off of just the deck lineups in general. And it also makes sense based off of these guys' habits so far. Uh, in the yep. tournament. So, game number three, Warlock versus Warlock. Zoo versus Zoo. Implosion red in hand. That's a keep, even if you go first. Yeah. In such a powerful card, swing card in the matchup, if you combine that with a knife juggler, it's like, wow, that is powerful. Yeah. So, Zoo Warlock is all about keeping control of the board. It's 100% about the board. An implosion sort of doubles up on the whole board thing because not only does it remove some of your opponents, but it also strengthens your own. Which hmm. uh, very It's a very unique card in that way, and uh, that's why it's usually kept in the mirror matchups. Voidwalker, Dark Peddler, still a good opening hand for Shiny Pants. This time he's on... Wait, that's the second time he's on the coin with the, void, uh, with, uh, with the Warlock. Didn't work for him first time. You need to keep the implosion. Keep the implosion. It's only bad when you roll two. <laughs> <laughs> In before he will roll two. Yeah. Well, he throws it away. 
He's going to try and get a good curve. This is actually really good. Uh, having Owl in your opening hand against Zoo Warlock is really powerful because it can deal with Haunted Creepers. It deals with Nerubian Eggs really well. That's true. And having your own Nerubian Egg is good because that's another swing card in the matchup. If you can activate a Nerubian Egg, again, it's sort of like Implosion where not only are you removing your opponent's board, but you're strengthening your own if you have an activator. Hmm. You don't need the Voidwalker this time. Yeah, you don't have a clean turn three. But, you know... Well, it's one more damage next time. When in Rome. <laughs> if the Hunter Cripple will be played, then you can actually trade with it. And I think I would. Because you're playing around uh, an Abusive Surgeon. Yeah. So that's definitely viable. Yeah, this matchup is a little bit weird in the fact that sometimes you throw absurd amounts of damage into small amounts of damage. With Death Rattle, and you're like, yeah. why would I do that? Yeah. But Shiny Pants seems to be taking a different route because he picked up a Dire Wolf. Yeah. And that's six damage is actually a lot. On yeah. Turn two. And Shiny Pants is sort of calling Waning Moon's bluff here uh, by saying, you know what? You have to have it. I'm going to force you to have it. Uh, if you Abusive Sergeant, you're you're trading up, but you're also killing off your Haunted Creeper. And I saw you throw away a lot of cards in the mulligan. So if you didn't have a one drop, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that your hand was pretty terrible. And I'm going to try and go face. Well, there's an Abusive Sergeant for Shiny Pants. Look at that. He has Enhanced Mechano on turn 4. Yeah. So you want to drop as many minions as possible right now. I would say it's Dark Peddler, see the D1 drop mm -hmm. from the Peddler, then decide what to do later, because it might be actually um, Abusive Sergeant. An Urban Egg might not be the case, because if you want to, if you plan to play Encanso Mechano, you don't want to buff like with Wind Fury or Divine Shield the Egg. Yeah. So there's only one good outcome for an Urban Egg, which is Taunt. Yeah. So what is your stance on... Breaking the egg and then trading Breaking with the flaming. Breaking the trading, yeah. If you have the enhanced mechano, never, never, never. Shiny pants is really agonizing over this turn. Well, uh, to be honest, I don't really like playing with an enhanced mechano, so kind of. If you have it, kind of commit commit to one strategy, right? Yeah. So I would say you want to have as many minions as, as many minions as possible, but he plays the ruby like. Yeah, this is sort of. A halfway plan. Uh, you're yeah, still dealing with your weird. opponent's board, but you're not dealing with the egg, um, which gives uh, Waning Moon some initiative here. And this is a this is okay for Waning Moon because he can silence the opponent's Nerubian egg. Uh, trade into the Voidwalker. He'd be left with an Owl, an Abuse of Sergeant, and a four four, and he'd be up against the silenced egg, a Dire Wolf, and a three one. Now the thing is, the egg would still uh, be get one two. Right. B one two, so it would be able to trade into your one of your two ones, but it would, you know, die permanently after that. So, but it, it's it's the play that fights on the board the best, and it's the play that gives you the strongest opportunity to come back. Sure. Too bad he can't fit the life tap as well. That turn will be actually a huge deal. Silence the egg. Now the positioning of the egg is maybe not the prettiest one, but you can still sacrifice it for the Abyss of Surgeon example, and then trade the flame into a Nerubian egg. Yeah. I mean, Nerubian spider, the hatched one. So, it's yeah. not bad. I mean, you can go for... You, can, you can actually go first, you trade the egg, and then you play the Encanto Mechano, because if you get the Divine Shield on the flame imp, you then you have a free trade on it. And y you can't... Yeah. And you can get the, the divine shield on the egg because then you can't trade with the w with the spider yeah. first. Yeah, I mean in the first place. Yeah, so you might just go with a different road here and maybe just play imp gang boss and just wait for the hands of Mechano. Would you wait? You have already two minions. <laughs> it's never gonna get better. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you get wind fury and you have abusive surgeon next turn. Yeah, could be as powerful. always something. Yep. Play Paddler for Mortal Coil. Because if you play Imp Gang Boss, you basically you're not doing it that much. Alright. 
So he's leaving up a, 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 a minion for Waning Moon, which could be a little bit dangerous because of Abusive Sergeant. Um, but the thing is, Waning Moon right now just doesn't have much much else. Like, he's got Abusive Sergeant, but then he can Defender of Argus one target? Well, yeah. Which is not very strong. You can also play like a Tempo Big Game Hunter, but that just means it's going to get traded into with his opponent's Abusive Sergeant, which is not a trade you want. He's trading a one mana creature with a Battle Cry for his three mana Big Game Hunter. So, Waning Moon's in a lot of trouble. That's true. How can you make a, like a, like a good turn here? This is why I dislike the versions of Zoo that are packing like these minions that are like so heavily... Uh, ha ha and they rely so heavily on a board situation. Mm -hmm. Like the Sea Giants, like the Beacon Hunter, right? So and Cancer Mechano. And Cancer Mechano, yes. They're all clunky if something goes wrong with your plan. Yeah. My shield for Argus. I mean, it dies anyway. Alright. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Now, the thing is... You will have to play the Abuse of Sudden first. So and you play it on the wolf, right? Yes, because then you trade the Flame Imp. Most likely. Yeah. Let's see. And Cancer Meccano. Wow. Alright. What's, What's the outcome? Wind Fury on the wolf! Oh wow. That's, That's actually the best possible outcome. Yeah. He has double Wind Fury with the minions that, that are behind the taunt. Yeah, this is like the, the best outcome. Seems, seems good. Seems good. TJ approved. What's funny, I have a t shirt with which says witness. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. So. <laughs> yeah. I like that t shirt. It's really nice. You're the witness of this. Highlight. Yeah. Witness this play that seems really good. Yeah, this is uh, pretty bad much the nail in the coffin for Waning Moon. Bad placement, though. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it makes a difference, right? Because yeah. you have 4, 8, 10, 13 damage. Yeah. And that means Waning Moon has to tap, and I don't think there's anything he can pick up. Nerubian Egg's not going to do it, and it looks like he's going to have to tap out. As Lethal is represented on board. Well played, and Shiny Pants goes up 2-1. to one. So, he's left with his Druid. Druid. Seems like Shiny Pants has been in that situation a lot where he goes up in a lead and is left with Druid and then wins a series. He hasn't well, lost a series yet. This is the winner's bracket. That's right. Yeah. I was just thinking for a second, but yeah, you're correct. That is the winner's... Where's my tiny mirror? Look, here it is. Um, that's the winner's bracket. Final. It's not yes. the grand final of the tournament, but the winner's bracket final. Yeah. So that means the winner gets an automatic spot in the grand final. In the grand and final. And the loser goes to the lower bracket when he has the chance to make a comeback to the grand final. Yeah. He plays against the uh, in the losers finals. Sounds horribly, but uh, so if you win, if you lose the winners final and win the losers final, then you're in the grand finals. Then you played in three finals, and you could see. Uh, the players down there in the uh, the lower bracket uh, waiting for um, the outcomes of the matches. The outcomes, yeah. Uh, Beckham 7 is also, uh, I think that's Chonger. Uh, there's th Beckham 7, is an he goes by another name, a, m uh, a name that people know him by more. So Okay, you caught me off guard. I have no clue. Yeah, I, I looked it up earlier. Just because I was like, I don't, I don't even remember meeting someone named Beckham Seven. Well, you probably would take an autograph of, from Beckham, right? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Number seven, though. What's his number on the on the on his shirt? Is it seven? Might be seven. I don't know. I don't watch football. Yeah. Uh, sorry, soccer for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was I was terribly confused for a <laughs> slight moment there. <laughs> so, Druid versus Warlock. Knife juggle and implosion right in hand. And on the coin. Yeah. It's a good hand. The Rav is prepared, though, for the Nav Juggler. It's a solid hand. So, this matchup is usually Zoo favorite, but Druid can win. Uh, basically, what it needs is they need to be able to clear the board a few times. Well, they need what they usually need. So, Innervades, Wild Growth, and the addition of Swipe. Yeah, with a, hi with a, a higher priority on the Swipe than in most matchups. Yep. Exactly. 
Murloc seems to agree. <laughs> Lothar has the best Murloc impressions out of anyone in the entirety of Poland. I don't know about that. We have 37 million people, but 2 million people are living in the UK for some reason. Okay, what do we do have now? Dark Petal is being drawn by Winning Moon. Look at that curve by Shiny Pants, though. My god. Wild Growth and the Keeper of the Grove. Then you have 5 mana for Raven Shade of Nexramus. Yeah. Seems good. <laughs> yeah, seems oh. And a swipe? Oh, Are you look. kidding me? That's a swipe. Now he only needs an Innervate for Dr. Boom. Yeah. The next card's going to be Innervate, and then the card after that's going to be Dr. Boom. So, okay, the options are Young, Dragonhawk, Immortal Core, and a Soulfire. All right. Well, Mortal or sorry, Soulfire is really the only card that helps you fight on the board against Druid here. Even yeah, though you sacrifice a card, sometimes it's, it's worth bad. it. Yeah, yeah, because basically you get the card back with the life tap. So yep. it's like you pay two life and one mana to kill an <laughs> Azure Drake. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Did you... If the next card's Dr. Boom, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're casting this by yourself, Lothar. Well, w Waning Moon has a big game hunter, so it's not that big of a deal. But yeah. it, it might be as well a Ancient of Lore. Yeah. Which would be actually better. Yeah, it would be. Oh, well, Power Woman into the hand. A lot of burst. But Shiny Pants just has a lot of tools to fight back. If he picks up some big stuff to follow all this small stuff slash removal, then this is that sort of hand that Druid uses just to um, to <laughs> beat unfavorable matchups. Yeah. So okay, one interesting fact about this situation: in game boss actually bays out swipe, but it might be on purpose from Waning Moon because he wants to play uh, implosion after the swipe. Okay. Because now you can keep her into the hunted creeper and then swipe, and your opponent is left with one one one, which is great. But then your opponent has, l has like the green light for the implosion. Yeah. No way he's... Okay, never mind. Yeah, that is actually correct. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. <laughs> thought he was going to hero power? Yeah, I was like, no way you hero power this. Yeah. No, getting that shade out now, that innervate uh, just gets worse as the game goes on. So you might okay. as well get it out now. I'm not quite sure about the implosion right now because he drew the egg. Oh. Ooh, that's painful. Yipe. I mean, you have a PO, and you have an egg, and it's getting closer to turn six, when it actually might matter a lot if you play the knife juggle and the implosion at the same time. Yeah. So you build a board, up, you build the board faster with the egg and PO next turn than with the implosion right now. Yeah. And now Waning Moon is in a spot where it's turn six or turn five, sorry, and he has nothing on the board against the druid. With two minions. Ooh. Okay, well, if that hits for two, then you play it on the Shade of Max Ramos. If that hits for three or four, <laughs> then you play it on Path of Shadow. I think it actually but plays on But do you wait a turn? If he waits a turn, he's going to get heavily punished by Lotheb. He wasn't greedy last turn, so I doubt he's going to be greedy this turn. If he wants to follow his logic from last turn, then yes, you play the Implosion. I think so. Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh, that would be a disaster. This is going to be brutal. So he wants to soul fire this? He wants to play the egg and the soul fire? Or just, uh, I don't even know, M King boss? So I just want to po to everyone to point your attention at Waning Moon's face as the Lothab is smacked Wait, down on the Wait, might be Dr. Boom. Nope. Okay. It's Lothab time. Yeah. So another full clear for Shiny Pants, and this time he follows it up with a low theft. And the five mana remains, and Waning Moon is already sweating. Is it a Druid at all? No, it's low dead. Oh. Well, no reaction at all. <laughs> Not even phased by that. Oh, Jeez. no, no, now he reacted. Okay. okay. Yeah, that was the reaction we were, we were looking for. Yeah. Where's the abuse of Sergeant now? He was all tapped, making a Reddit post about Druids. <laughs> You need to go for the Abusive Surgeon. If you top the Abusive Surgeon, you can kill the uh, low tap with the Big Game Hunter. Well, that's not it. How much damage is that? That's 14. So a Savage Roar. 
Savage Orb just ends the game right now. Yeah, so does a Force of Nature because he has oh. a... Oh, oh, look at that. Shiny Pants, all tournament long, has just been finding the answers. Now, granted, the game was pretty much over at that point, but he's doing it in Shiny Pants style. Yep. I mean, that was a quite a good Druid game, I would say. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But, to be honest, Waning Moon could have picked some other options. Yeah, very and true. And the implosion was very risky yeah. on turn 4. So yeah. maybe if we, would, if we would go for the Egg and the PO, yeah. and then for the implosion, even on turn 5 instead of the turn 4, he would have had a, bit a better situation on board. A 4-4 four four minion mm -hmm. with no swipe from his opponent. So, hmm. Who knows? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Right? Well, that's going to be Shiny Pants moving on to the Grand Finals. So he secures himself a top two spot, which gets him at least $1,000. And, and 10 points. And at least 10 Hearthstone Championship Tour points. I'm sure he's going for that, for that winner's spot. Uh, so uh, we'll have to see. Of course, Winning Moon's not out. He, that was a winner's bracket final. So he's going to move down uh, to fight his way through the lower bracket and the lower bracket finals. So um, uh, maybe... He needs to cool down a little bit, calm his head, because mm -hmm. he looked a little nervous. I talked to him right before, and even going into the match, he looked a little bit nervous. So hopefully he can calm his nerves, because if he wins again, he's going to have to face Shiny Pants in a rematch in the Grand Finals if he wins through. Well, at least he will know not to implosion. <laughs> yeah, he's learned, he's learned a lot from that match. Uh, but that's going to do it for the Winner's Bracket Finals. Uh, we have two matches left to go today. We have the Loser's Bracket Finals, and then, of course, the Grand Finals. So at the end of it all, we will crown a Singapore major winner. But we are going to have to go to a quick break before we jump into the next match. Just going to be a few moments. So don't go anywhere, guys. More Singapore major card sling in action continues right after this.